Hello, it's me again. Um, I wanted to um, give you, um, I guess for those of you that are more auditory learners, um, a little bit of an overview. Excuse me, I got a real bad sunburn in Jamaica last week and I am peeling from second degree burns and it's disgusting, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, a little bit of um, sort of a verbal overview of the underpinnings of motivational interviewing and CBT. So let's start with motivational interviewing. The whole idea of motivational interviewing is to shift a person along the different stages of change until they get to the point where they are ready to take action, right? Um, and you do that by <clears throat> really honing in on the um, the ambivalence. Part of the issue is them not being able to make um, decisions, not being willing to make decisions, but it's very uncomfortable for us when we sit in sort of that space of not being just kind of an either or kind of thing, driving me nuts. Um, and so the majority of what you do is to kind of force them to sit there between the two. Um, and <clears throat> you don't press them to make a decision that you think is in the right direction. You just help them sort of weigh the pros, the cons, you know, um, the benefits, the costs, um, why they want to change, why they don't keeping them in that sort of realm of indecision um, creates that discomfort and starts to shift the motivation to change because they'll start to literally come to terms with themselves once they start laying everything out. Well, yes, actually, it probably would be a good idea to do this um, given these things that I've laid out for you as to why I should do it, right? So really helping them kind of think through um, it in detail. I'm sorry the sun is shining and so my backlight is messing you all up um <clears throat> and then um in terms of cognitive behavioral therapy this is based on the idea that it's based on the theory that thoughts um drive feelings which drive behaviors okay um and it is not universally applicable to everyone um, even though people who only practice CBT will say that it works with all clients. No, um, there are times, especially if you're interested in working with individuals with a history of trauma, where their hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis has become sensitized. They've lost top-down processing in their brain, which means their emotions are driving their thoughts and driving their behavior. So trying to restructure thoughts won't change the way they feel or the way that they act. Um, however, in some cases, it can still be productive, okay? Uh, but I will tell you from all the research we've seen, there's not one, not one intervention that is universally applicable to everyone. And you're gonna hear me harp on this throughout the semester every time we meet. And I'll explain why each time we're together and give you examples. Uh, anyway, but that's that's the general theory of the model is that thoughts drive emotions which drive behaviors, okay? And that by restructuring thoughts, we can then change emotions and change behaviors, okay? Um, all right, so that's just sort of the overview. I provided you with the fact sheets, which gives you an overview of the intervention and sort of outlines like some basic instructions. I gave you worksheets that can be used for each of the interventions to give you some idea of well, what would this look like? How do I how do I work through this if I don't just spontaneously know the questions I need to ask? And the worksheets will literally guide you through multiple sessions to start to, to get to where you want to go. Okay. And then I provided at least three different um, video interview sessions of motivational interviewing and of cognitive behavioral therapy so that you could see it in practice and kind of get used to that. Um, okay, um, I think that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Otherwise, you'll see me in my next explanation video.